In this video, I'm gonna talk about two things I've been doing to get the most out of my Suray anamorphic lenses. Now this is gonna work with any APS-C Suray anamorphic lens, like the 50 millimeter f1.8, 35 millimeter f1.8 like I have here, 24 millimeter as well as their 75 millimeter APS-C lens. And now these two things aren't complete game changers to transform this lens and turn it into something that it wasn't before. However, I have been using both of these techniques to just get a little bit of a boost out of this lens. And they're pretty much just gonna help you get the most possible value out of these lenses as you can. All right, so without further ado, the first thing we're talking about is these right here. So these right here are diopter filters. So these are essentially like mini magnifying glasses that thread onto the front of your lens and essentially allow you to get a closer minimum focus distance than you could before. So one of the well-known issues with really any anamorphic lens is the difficulty to achieve a close focus distance just because of the design and just how they build these types of lenses. So almost any anamorphic lens is gonna have a farther minimum focus distance than most spherical lenses would have. So for example, this Suray 35 millimeter 1.33X anamorphic lens has a minimum focus distance of 2.8 feet. So it's really not the best in terms Terms of getting any close-ups of things. I really can never just focus as close as I want to. You know, I'm not even trying to get macro stuff, just even normal distances that with a standard lens you'd be able to get. Um, I find I struggle getting focused with this lens. But if I throw on one of these diopters, even the lowest strength, which is a plus one diopter, it'll just make that close focus distance a little bit closer so you can get closer up to objects. The thread right in the front of your lens, so it's really simple. However, there are a few issues with using diopters. So first of all, you're gonna be moving the close focus distance closer, which means you're also gonna be moving the infinity focus distance closer, which means with any diopter, you're gonna lose your maximum focus distance. You're gonna lose infinity focus. And these diopters also lower the image quality a little bit. I have some really cheap ones from Amazon, which I'll link down in the description. They're not the best quality at all, but I really like them because they kind of add more characteristics to it because they're lower quality. I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more just in a minute here. And I'm also gonna test these out and show you examples of you know what these diopters look like on the camera. But something I've also noticed these do is affect the squeeze on the anamorphic lens. So this is a little bit of a bigger issue because you're gonna have to de-squeeze your footage in your editing software. And you usually just, you know, find out what it is depending on the squeeze of the lens. However, every different strength of diopter slightly affects the squeeze on the image just because it's shifting all the light around and you know pushing things around differently like what it's not meant to do. So having diopters on here will affect your squeeze and you're gonna have to play around with your you know squeeze factor or whatever you'd call it in your editing software. Otherwise you might have some warped and stretched images. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some flare tests. I have a flashlight right here. I'm just gonna see what the flaring looks like with this lens. It's wide open at f1.8 right now. And then I'm also gonna throw in some of these diopters and see how those affect flaring so we can just see an example right here. So once I throw these on, it's gonna get really close up and probably out of focus and weird. So first of all, this is no filter on the lens. It's wide open at f1.8 right now. Let's turn this flashlight on. And you can see right away, there is some pretty extreme flaring with this lens. So you see, you know, kind of this big flare right here, this streak across the screen, but there's not only that, there's also this secondary flaring that's kind of down over here. So there's this, you know, kind of half circle flare right here, some other things, and then a second streak actually, that also runs horizontally, just like this first one up here. And so the more I move this around, you can really see the flaring on this lens can get really extreme. All right, so I'm sure you've kind of gotten an example of what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the least powerful diopter and we'll see what the flaring looks like with that. All right, so this is a close up plus one. So this is the least powerful diopter that I have. Now the diopter set that I have is this cheap Vivitar one, I think. I bought it from Amazon and it was like less than 20 bucks for a four pack of diopters. Now I haven't tested out any other diopters. These are the only ones I've used. However, they do impact the sharpness, especially since I bought the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon. And now in my opinion, decreasing the sharpness a little bit and adding more, uh, what am I looking for? More imperfections into this lens. But yeah, that's why I really like these cheap diopters. They kind of add imperfections. And as you can see right here, they add a lot more flaring as well. So at least with the ones I have, not only are you adding a lower quality piece of glass than probably what is inside the lens, in front of your lens, which of course is gonna add imperfections to it on its own, but it's also like warping and changing, you know, the light coming into the lens. It's a diopter, it's not just a straight piece of glass. So you're bending that light even more and moving things around and changing things 
you know, different from what they were supposed to be with this lens. And so that's why it's adding all this more flaring. All right, so this is no diopter, and then this is the plus two diopter now. All right, so I'm actually out at infinity focus right now, and this is about as far as I can get. And your father, I'm gonna start going out of focus here. And this is with the plus two diopter. And this adds even more shapes. I mean, there's now there's like these vertical lines going through there, more shapes and even more extreme flaring to this, which again is very circumstantial, very, you know, personal preference based, you know, what you'd like for flaring. But I really think, oh man, if you back out here, yeah, look at that. I guess I think for anyone at this point, this is pretty extreme. Other than, of course, if you're going for a very specific look in a music video, you know, a dream sequence or, you know, some specialized sequence, then yeah, this could definitely be a look you could be going for, but this is pretty extreme for almost everybody else. Okay, so next up, it actually goes straight from the one to the two to the four, and then the next one is actually a plus 10, which is probably gonna be impossible to get anything with. So this is gonna be the last one that I'm gonna actually test on here, plus four diopter. Probably the most extreme you're gonna need to go. I'm still at infinity focus right now. So this is as far away as it'll go. Even more, every time it just adds even more shapes, even more different things added to this. Yeah, I mean, that just, that overtakes the entire image at this point. That's, that's a little too much. But the next thing that I've been doing to really just unlock a little bit more out of my Sure anamorphic lens is actually using this on a full frame camera. So this is an APS-C lens and you're gonna get some vignetting around the edges. However, what I found is when I use this lens on my Sony a7S III, and I use clear image zoom or just crop in in my editing software and crop in 1.3x or 130%. It gets rid of all the vignetting. It maybe leaves a little bit in the corners, but it gets rid of the unusable vignetting and you're at 1.3x versus an APS-C camera, which is 1.5 or 1.6x. So you're actually getting a wider field of view and more information from this lens. However, the only issue with this is if you use this lens on a full frame camera and get that vignetting, for every single clip, you're gonna need to crop in to get rid of all that vignetting that's gonna show while you're monitoring the footage. So it's always gonna have all that gross vignetting on the footage when you record it. Now, if you do have a Sony camera and use clear image zoom, to zoom in on the footage to whatever you need it to be. That will save the footage just like that, so you won't need to in your editing software. But every time you shut the camera off and turn it back on or switch modes, it will reset that zoom, so you're gonna need to go back into clear image zoom, zoom back in, and then record again. And there's also some settings that aren't available with clear image zoom on in some Sony cameras. So there are limitations. You're definitely gonna need to do your research based on which camera you have and stuff like that. But using this on a full frame camera and then just cropping in however much you need to can give you the extra wider field of view and those edges that aren't normally in the footage but are when you zoom out a little bit. That's the two things that I've been doing to really maximize my Sure anamorphic lens. And they've helped me just get that little bit of extra quality and you know look to my anamorphic footage that I'm trying to go for. Now I hope this video helps you out. If you have a Sure anamorphic lens, definitely let me know in the comments. And also stay tuned because I am making another video where I'm gonna be featuring this lens and using it to film a sequence with. So stay tuned for that as well. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.